Hey everyone! Now before we begin today's video, I just want to apologize formally because I accidentally played one game off video. Now it is a game I won and I will add it onto the score. However, I did play one accidentally and I will provide proof just in case um, some people may believe that I may have played a lot more games than I accidentally uh, did and wanted to just cover up the fact. Now hopefully you guys understand and let's get straight into the video. I've been quite busy the last couple of days because of final exams and in fact I still have a couple final exams right now that I have to deal with but I'm just going to play a couple of games today and see how you guys enjoy these. Now my opponent is kind of playing a little bit suspicious stuff over here. Is he going to play pawn e5? He's playing a Philidor but he took on e4 and I always told you guys that taking on e4 always gives the person who's playing the Philidor like structure an advantage. Now this is a little bit suspicious. Do I want to play queen c2 first or do I want to play b4? Or do I want to castle? I think castling is a lot safer. Let's just play castle, play pawn b4 and just threaten to, you know, push over here and win the pawn in e5 and win the bishop as well. Um, Alright, a6 is not a move you want to play because this just gives me tempo. And now this just gives me this pawn. Um, now the question is, yeah, I guess we just capture this way. I mean... It's fine, we don't win anything more. Do I want to play f4? Do I want to just move the knight back? Um, let's just move the knight back. Let's play simple. Play simple chess. Maybe I can play queen here. Try to trade off pieces. Does that... Mm, that works. That does work. I need to make sure I don't blunder anything. Or I can just continue my attack, actually. Attack seems pretty strong here. Not gonna lie. Alright, I can even put my knight on d4. That looks super strong as well. Let's put the knight here. I like the knight being here. I have to be scared of some bishop takes b4, but even if they do do that, like I think it's completely fine for me. Um, if I play here, you can take on e4. If I play rook here, you can take on b4. Am I scared of that? Not quite. Let's just play pawn here. Just begin the pawn storm. This knight can never re-enter society. It can never be happy. And this move is played. That's an interesting move. Didn't calculate it, but all right. Um, do we just play rook b1? Like, I don't see any threats here. Gotta calculate, make sure nothing happens, nothing explodes. My piece is all well defended. This knight is still um, segregated from the rest of society. Not something you want your knight to be. Um, here, I guess I can just play knight b3. Knight b3, take on e4. I think I'm fine there. Maybe bishop b3. Alright, do I just play bishop b2, just gain tempo after tempo after tempo? Need to make sure I don't blunder anything still. Um, yeah, looks fine to me. Let's play bishop b2. Captures here, I think this should be winning for me. Um, still. Now I need to be sure. Capture here. And what if I play rook e1? That was what I planned. Oh, it doesn't quite work because he can take on f2. Can't play f3 as well, so I guess I just take here and then take there. And we are just up a lot of stuff here, so being up a lot of stuff is good for you guys. Now, I think I'll just play here. Force his knight. Oh, no, actually, I'll move here. Pin the knight to the knight. Force the move b6. And after this, I take, come over here. The knight is still um, unhappy. His rook is unhappy. His pawns are unhappy. In fact, everything is quite unhappy. Um, now, this is something I want you guys to learn from. Um, after I play the, uh, this g3 move. Now, the reason why I'm playing g3 is to stop myself from getting uh, blundering my back rank checkmates. So many games are lost because of some silly back rank checkmates. And I don't want that to happen to you guys. Um, Alright, I guess we just capture here. That's weird. It doesn't capture back. Oh, I guess it's because I'm winning if he captures back because I can just trade off the knight and rook. So, let's just move my pieces up. It's kind of smart of him not to capture there because it's just an easy win for white. Alright, he allows me to just push here. So I guess we push. And we move the king, or do we just take here? Gotta make sure we don't blunder to any silly forks. Alright, now we just capture there and play rook over here. Just defend the peace forever. 
no silly forks. When the knight is like this positioned, there's no way your opponent can um, fork you. Stay there, he's going to take my pawn. Oh, he takes there. All right, and we won the first game. All right, he wants a rematch. Well, let's let's accept it. He's playing d3. Mm, don't think Philidor would be very strong against d3. So let's just play this. All right. Not sure what setup my opponent's going to go for. This is some interesting setup. Never really seen this type of setup before. It's not a very good one, it seems. Let's play rook here. Pawn c6. Maybe we can move here. Do we want to play e5 here? e5, with the idea of capture, capture, knight here, knight over there. Is that good for me? Or do I want to keep up the pressure with knight here? Um... No, I, I like this. This is like a Kali like structure. I don't know if you guys know the Kali's. Um, it's like the Kali normal setup, not the Kali Zukrator, but the normal setup. Play here, and we're just going to bring our pieces to attack our opponent's king. This is. Um, you don't see this setup all too often, but maybe I have some tricks over here. Um, If I play rook here, threatening uh, this pawn over here, opponent has to do something. Plays there, which allows me to play knight e5, which takes advantage of his light squares. Now, do I want to capture with the queen or the rook? Actually, queen might be better because we're infiltrating the light squares here. Ooh. Now, that was a weird sound. It seems to me somebody just subscribed to my channel. That's very nice. Now we play queen here, which keeps the knight stuck. And I'm also threatening to take it. Threatening check. And checkmate. Do I want to take here and check here? It's winning. But do we have something better? We have knight here. Is knight there better? Looks better. I don't see how my opponent can do anything about it. Um. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, I guess we just play this. And say so I'm going to take here with the knights. If I take the knight and take on h2, it might be faster. It might be safer if you're bad and not so good at calculations. But here I think it's even better. Because if I take here, I force his knight to capture me. And as you guys know, to take is a mistake. So I'm going to capture here. Force him to capture me. Otherwise, he loses the game. And after capturing here, I, I can take on g3 as well. Pretty exciting. No, I cannot take on g3. Because I thought I had to work here, but that doesn't quite work. Um, do I just check here? Check, check. What do I want to do here? Play bishop here. Attack that rook, actually. That looks pretty strong. Because if he blocks, then I checkmate him. He might just take here. But then I can take there. They might play queen d4, I just play like f6 or like rook g6. The rook's job is done here, so I just play rook g6 or something. Life seems pretty good. Um, realized part of this board you guys can't really see properly, so let's move this over here. So he's threatening checkmate, which is indeed threatening. Now, I think I just play rook f6 though, just threatening checkmate of my own. And sure, this might put my pieces in like this, which is a little bit annoying. I don't think my opponent can really take advantage of this too much because I'm threatening checkmate on f2. And the queen can't retreat here because then I'll just checkmate him. So my opponent is left with a dilemma. Do you move f pawn and lose or do you move rook and move, lose? And so my opponent's going to make one of these moves. Don't know which one he'll make, but I, I'm just going to win, I guess. Let's see what my opponent does. He's thinking. It's a hard think. Um, da, 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 da. What's my opponent going to do? Maybe he'll stack on f6. Yeah, that's exactly what he decides to do. And now over here, I think I can just capture here. King captures makes a lot of sense. Let's check him over here. Mm, do I take here first? I think I take here first. And then... Let's check over here. Let's check over here. 
he wants a draw, obviously. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Um, let's not give him the draw. And I need to be careful some background checkmates, as I've told you guys before. But I should be in the clear. I just need to win a couple of his pawns, and then I win the game. Sorry about the board placement earlier. Could have been slightly better. Opponent's tanking. Alright, let's check here, win the pawn. This is how you guys convert. Just try to win as much more material as possible. If I want to play c5, just poke him a little bit. Uh, I'm kind of low on time, so I need to play a little bit faster. Right, let's take here. Simplify the game. Win the rook. Win the game. Alright, let's play somebody else now. Alright, let's do another white philidor for you guys. I've been practicing a lot off stream, which is where I made the mistake of playing that extra game. That's completely my bad. Because I want to uh, bring my best for you guys when playing this white philidor. Need to practice. That's how anybody gets good at chess. Nobody is magically better than anybody else. Not Evan Magnus Carlsen. Do I play here? Mm, no, I think I just keep the pressure up here. Play b4 in the future. Castle. Something I've learned in the past is not castling right away, but no, castling seems fine. b4, capture here, capture here, capture there. Is that good for me? I think I've played those positions before and they're not the best. I think we just capture now because he, if his knight captures, then I can take on e5, which means he has to capture with bishop, which is good for me. Now, do I play knight here? I think we just play knight here. We don't want to play knight f3 because he can capture e2, play bishop g4, and that's kind of annoying. And if he captures here, I'm completely fine with that. I'm going to play bishop e3. He wants to capture me. If I capture... Actually, let's play knight here. Let's put this knight on a nice square. Play bishop e3, pawn b4. My opponent most definitely does not want me to just take on e6, but he also doesn't want me to capture on b7 for free. So, alright, he gives me the bishop pair, which is good enough for me. Um, alright, let's play here. So he's solidifying this, but I get b4 in. If I get b4, then this isn't as strong as a setup he might think it is. This is a, like a, this is a no longer a filler, this is a Nidorf position. Somebody in my comment section earlier wanted me to show a Nidorf like position. This is very similar to one. Play f4 too in some positions actually. Alright, let's play b4. Maybe rook c1. Let's keep pressuring that. He's threatening to take here, I need to be careful of that. Where do I move this queen? Um, I need to be careful. Do I just play f3 though? f3 looks simple. We get rook c1. Obviously we don't capture here because then we're just left with a bad bishop and that's not something we want. So we just play rook here. Just develop our pieces. If we can create a weakness on c5, that's very good for us. Now I can play rook f2, bishop f1. That's something I want to do. Alright, now we take q. If he wants to capture on um, e2, that's completely fine with me. Yep, if he wants to capture on e2, that's fine with me. Because I, c5 is a big weakness. I'm just going to plop this guy over here. Now, which way do I capture back with? Rook or... I think rook. We win the c5 pawn. Yep. We win this c5 pawn, and we have a bishop in the endgame, which is quite nice. Hmm. Do we win this pawn too? 
No, we do not, because then he takes that pawn, and then we have pawns on the same side of the board, which favors the knight, which we do not want. Unless we play here. Then it no longer favors the knight, does it? We create some double pawns in the position. Yeah, let's play bishop e7. Let's poke that rook. Tell, ask it where it wants to go. He can't move to d7. That would be a big mistake by him. Alright, so he decides to move to e8. I can capture here, but I don't think my advantage is big enough to win with those double pawns. Let's just move here and see what my opponent wants to do. I need to play a little bit faster. If need be, we can try to um, win on time like usual. Alright. We can just double up and play king e2. Sounds like a solid enough plan. King e2. Bishop b6. Solid enough. Could play knight over here. I just play g3. Say no. No come. Don't come into my house, please. Alright, he gives me a free pawn. I think I'll take that. And let's play a uh, bishop here. We capture here. I think we do. Play something like rook a1. Just play safe. Just play it safe. Double up on the D file. And when I say double, I mean like this way. And we win the game. Alright, that was pretty simple as well. We're up a pawn here. And there really is nothing much our opponent can do. Alright, let's play one more for today. Hope you guys are enjoying, if you guys are enjoying so far. Again, the like button would be much appreciated. Alright, so let's just play pawn D6. Fill the door like structure against everything, I guess. My opponent's not going to try to gain the center. I guess I'll just try to take some. Um, Alright. Let's just put the bishop here. Why not? Let's put a knight here. Rook e8. Bishop f8. Uh, queen c7. Maybe you get d5 in later. Well, which way do we want to capture? Pawn captures. Huh. That's interesting. Um, I guess we capture and play knight c5. Rook d8. Develop our pieces extremely quickly. Try to gain an advantage against our opponent. Alright, let's play knight b5. Alright, he trades off for that. Now we have the bishop pair. And you guys know how much I like the bishop pair. Bishop f5 forces e4. Actually, doesn't force e4. He can just take. Wait, that was a blunder by me. Huh. Okay, my opponent didn't see it. I think we play bishop here now. You know, tickle him a little bit. Yeah, that was a mistake by me, I think. Luckily, my opponent didn't see it. Let's play bishop here. If he wants to trade pieces, that's completely fine by me. Trading pieces will always favor the side with the double bishops. Even though this position looks a little bit closed, it can be easily opened up. Especially this bishop in g2 is just a bad bishop because of the pawn in e4. Ooh, that was actually a mistake. I think he could have just captured my rook. And would that be better for him? It's not bad. Uh, it's not checkmate against me because take here, I take his queen, he takes on e8, bishop f8. Huh, is that bad for me? Two rooks for a queen. My, knight, my bishop's on a nice square though. His rook kind of been questionable, so it's probably not actually that big of a mistake. I'll have to look after the game. I wonder what, what my opponent's thinking of here. I can always just take the knight and then play plug my bishop on d4. But I don't know how I'm going to proceed from there. I'm sure the position is better for me because I have a better bishop. That's why we don't play both c4 and e4. That just creates a weakness on d5 for me to take advantage of. But I don't know... Um, what I can do. Now, hopefully I'm not lagging out again. My opponent's 
taking an awfully long time to think here, which is a little bit peculiar. My recording seems to be going all right, so oh, maybe my opponent is connected, perhaps. I don't know what's happening. Hopefully I did not disconnect. It's happened once before, that's why the one at the very end. But if it happens, it happens. Yeah, I'm beginning to think it's me because it doesn't didn't say my opponent disconnected here. Alright, let's do a couple pre-moves if he decides to do this. We will know in 30 seconds. Do, 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 do. But while this is happening, question of the day today. Um, I don't know. What is today's question of the day? Hmm. You know, let's let's give another question like the one I said before. When do you guys think is my first official loss? When do you guys think that's going to happen? Not a disconnect, but an actual loss in which my opponent outplayed me from the beginning and I just get destroyed. I don't know how, what I think. Maybe 1900? That's usually when people begin messing up. And I won, I guess. So I guess my opponent did disconnect. He just didn't want to play, I guess. Um. Well, that's interesting. Alright, because this wasn't really a game, I'll do one more for you guys. Let's do one more. We're approaching the 1700s. Let's see if he plays d5. Bishop b4, guys. I've showed you guys this in the 1200 rated puzzles. Why this move is not good at all. Yet, it is always played for some reason. Look how much space I just got from my opponent for no reason. Here, take, take, yep. This looks pretty good for me. Knight c4, if he captures here, captures there. Look at that double pawn over there. Waiting for my opponent to calculate, alright. Bishop b2. I'm just attacking a lot of things here. If I want to play b5... B5 allows knight a5. Nah, it's fine. I sh should I play g3? I don't know. No, e3 comes with tempo here, so I should play it. Um, nope, he's trying to take advantage of the pin, actually. So let's play bishop b2 to defend first. And then play e3. I need to be careful with these p silly pins over here. They happen. I'm threatening here to win the pawn in e5. Because the knight has to retreat to one of these squares, then I can take on e5 for free. Alright, so let's play e3. Mm, but he's threatening check with the queen. So queen d2 does not work. Let's just play bishop c3. Um, queen d2 does not work as a knight b3, that's annoying. So let's play here. Don't want to fall for any of the silly tricks my opponent's trying to go for here. Alright, that's attacking my um, piece. Mm, my opponent's putting a lot of pressure on me right now. Alright, let's play just um, bishop here, I guess. And then we can set up some discoveries. Yep. Opponent's not that developed, so I don't even need to be scared if he wins this a4 pawn somehow. If he plays queen a3, mm, just e3. Looks simple enough. Alright, let's play this. Kick it away. Go away. Go away. Has to move the knight somewhere. Maybe he'll sacrifice it? That looks kind of silly. Oh. Does this not just blunder though? After bishop here? Is he seeing a tactic I'm not seeing? I don't know. Maybe there is some cool tactic that he can checkmate. It won't be the first time I got checkmated to some super cool tactic, but I, don't, I just don't see it. I'm attacking the queen, I'm attacking the knight, it's just the is this a fork? When we attack two pieces, it's just a double attack. I think it's just a double attack, because we're not using the same piece to attack two pieces at the same time. My opponent's putting a lot of pressure, so this is strong from a 1600 rated player. I'm surprised. Alright, I guess we just win it. We just give a random check to him. Um, give a random check, force the knight to retreat. 
But he can play king d8, and that's actually kind of annoying. That's an interesting move. Play rook c4 here. Rook c4 is saying, hey, you're not taking my a4 pawn without a fight. Yeah, I guess. You're not taking my a4 pawn without a fight. Could just give it up for some tempos, but I think that's actually worse for me, so I'm just play this. Look at this garbage pawn, it's like, I can just take this one. Let's play bishop b2, get my king castled as well. Um, I'm just going to play rook e8 or something. I can take here, d4. Yeah, I can just take this pawn. I should have taken it, because now he maybe has this annoying stuff. Um, though I'm not sure how annoying that actually is. Alright. Would you like to trade pieces, kind sir? I would like it very much if you trade pieces with me. Thank you. Now I don't even have to castle because the queens are off the board. Now I can just take this pawn and be happy. Um, yeah, I guess we just take here. Gotta be careful. My opponent and I are both low in time. Um, now we just play here. Make sure no silly stuff happens. Alright, let's move to the knight. Then we move the rook out. And we win the game. Alright, um... Threatening this silly fork, so let's stop it. Let's play bishop e2. Fall for pieces. And we're gonna win. Alright, that's fine. Play bishop f3, looks nice for our pieces. We are up a piece in case you guys have forgotten. So, and we won. Alright guys, I hope you guys won. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed today's games today. The games have been quite simple. Uh, nothing really, not many games have put up a lot of pressure against us. Only thing problematic has been, well, time. And so, basically in these positions, what would my advice be for people around this rating who's 1600 on chess.com? I don't know, I think just playing simply, like, just makes a lot of sense. Like, this game, I just, well, my opponent put up a lot of pressure, I thought to myself what each threat was, and I defended against each one. And after I defended them all, I'm just up with more material and won the game. And that's the, mo that's the thing with most um, players at this level, they play too complicated. In fact, at my level, people play too complicated. You could play really any opening. I'm not playing the best openings, as you guys can see. I'm playing d3 on first move. But since I'm able to take advantage of my opponent's mistakes, that's how I'm able to win. I hope you guys enjoyed today's chess games. If you guys did, press that like and subscribe button. We're going quite fast, and I'm, I'm very, very happy, and I'm very thankful for every single one of you guys. If you guys have any questions for me, tell me in the comment section below, and I'll be sure to answer them. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video.